Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Achenna, and welcome to episode 116 of Game Programming. So last time, we changed our UI manager to use Java's graphics class so that we could end up with rather high resolution um, text and, and, and rendering um, in comparison to our game, which is, well, we made our engine to be rather low resolution to match a certain aesthetic, and we don't really want to have that same limitation with UI. So what we've done is utilize Java's um, graphics class to render some pretty high resolution stuff compared to our game. Um, now, that being said, uh, today we're actually going to use the UI for something. Um, one thing I should mention that we can do, by the way, is, and I'm not sure if you want to do this from a performance point of view, but you can, since we're rendering this on top of the other image, we can actually add transparency to this and, um, and not make it fully solid. So you can see the game beneath, like, you can see the game behind your user interface if you really wanted to. Um, and I don't know how to do that, but I think, well, I imagine you probably can do that. Um, it might be in the color. Let's take a look at the color class. RGBA has alpha, so, um, yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, um, so what we can do is basically set this to true. And this should give us just nothing. Okay, it worked. And you can see, you can see the game behind this, right? And of course, we can make an alpha of, I don't know, let's just say half. Um, and you can see, you can see the game through it. Now, you you might want to do something like that. And by the way, that was totally possible with our previous setup. It just, it just would have meant that we would have had to render a separate kind of layer and a separate rendering target. Um, otherwise, of course, it doesn't, or, or we could have, I guess, done actual blending, but that would be horrifically slow without hardware acceleration. So let's not do that. Anyway, the point is, um, here we have this, and this is still running pretty quickly. Um, you can do something like this. I'm not sure if I really want to, because, well, Realm of the Mad God doesn't do it, and it might be weird because you'd be clicking on your interface, but, like, maybe you wouldn't want to see that. I don't know, it just, it looks a bit weird. But the point is, you can do stuff like that if you really want to. Um, where probably you're just going to stick with a solid. Because if we do stick with solid, that also means that we don't have to render almost a, about a, th I don't know, about a quarter of our screen. We just do not need to render. Okay? Which, of course, will in turn boost performance as well, because the game will only be rendered in this, like, viewport, which is essentially even lower resolution than the rest. Okay, cool. Um, and by the way, the way we could do that is, if you, if you just really want to kind of experiment with that on your own, is if we want to game, and instead of drawing this image of get height, um, we could draw it at, say, in fact, all we really should be doing is drawing this at width times scale, and this will become apparent because, I mean, right now it's not gonna, it's actually gonna look exactly the same, or it should. Yeah, no change. But, um, when we want to reduce the width by a little bit, so that was like 80 times 3, I think, uh, you can see we can actually do that. Now, right now it just squishes everything because we aren't really conditioned for that. Um, but if we do this, then you can see it works. And I don't actually, oh, whoops, yeah, that's my bad. Um, that sets the width of the screen as well. So we'll set the width to that. We'll keep the width there. Uh, now this is where this comes into handy. Um, yeah, this really is annoying, isn't it? Okay. For now, let's just add on 80 times 3 to that. It's still not rendering a bit. Lovely. Um, why is it not doing that? Oh, yeah. That should be, yeah. There we go. So you can see now it's actually physically not rendering anything behind hello, and you can see the frame rate almost went up by like about 800, 1000 frames per second even, as opposed to what it was before. Okay, so we can do that. Now it's no longer rendering anything there. So if I were to go ahead and, like if we were actually clearing the screen, we're actually not. Like as in we're not drawing anything behind the pixels array, so if I get rid of it, nothing will happen. But if I was first drawing, say, a pink um, rectangle, which actually was the size of the screen, or the size of our window, which is right over here, um, and I set the color to, I don't know, pink. Okay, um, and I got rid of UI manager.render. 
you can see that there we go it's pink so nothing's actually being rendered there so i'm actually going to keep it like this for now um because well because we i don't think we want to render anything behind that and you can see it does obviously since uh, we, we we didn't hard code our positions and whatnot and players position is well the levels based on the player's position you can see the player is now in the middle before he was like here because he was rendering the entire thing so this might be a bit nicer as well um, of course, if we still click on the UI panel, we still get full input and whatnot because it doesn't know. It's, we're just with the whole. It's taking input from the entire window, basically from the entire canvas, which is the entire window. But um, basically, we've got everything working pretty well, and you can see nothing's been rendered there. I'm going to keep this here just for testing purposes and just to make sure that we haven't missed anything because you can see if we just render nothing, it's just going to be all pink. So we can see easily uh, if we've got any kind of holes in our rendering because we shouldn't. Cool. Anyway, there you go. All good in the hood. So, uh, that being said, now that we've kind of re redone our game, and you can see how easy that was as well, that's totally fine. So, let's go ahead and look at some Realm things. And actually, before we do, um, what I want to do is uh, show you guys um, this. So, these are the channel.com forums. So, it's just the channel.com slash forums. Um, one thing I want to mention is that I get a lot of questions about um, where can you get help regarding uh, general programming or game programming, the, the series or whatever, okay? And this is definitely the place. You can see how many posts there are here in the game programming thing. These definitely get answered. I'm usually on these forums as well, and I've been doing a lot of answering lately. Um, but the idea is if you guys want to talk about anything regarding game programming in general, not just the game programming series, so whether it be game programming or just programming in general, um, you certainly can. So go to these forums, register, and uh, this is this is the place to get help and to talk about game programming. So there you go. Anyway, let's look at some more Realm of the Mad God stuff. Um, images. Let's take, let's take a look at what they're set up, because we are effectively trying to clone their game. Not because, like, we're trying to make a Realm of Mad God clone, it's just that we've chosen a game that we want to try and recreate for the purposes of learning how to make games, and this seems like a pretty good candidate. Cool, so there we go, that's actually tiny resolution. Let's try and get some high resolution stuff, maybe. Um, I don't know if there are high resolution stuff, that's probably going to be very high res, yeah. And most of that doesn't include the panel, okay, this one does. Cool. So this is like full HD here, but um, you can see what. Okay, so they've got a bit of a the player, the player's name, a button to return to the nexus or whatever it's called to the center of the thing. I haven't played this game in like three years, by the way, since I started the series. But um, oh, this has changed. This is new. Oh, have it? Maybe I don't know. Anyway, you've got your weapons down here. I presume these are just consumables and potions and stuff that you can actually just click on to drink. Uh, these are your main kind of currently equipped things. Yeah, this is like your trading thing, actually. I think it's because he's standing over a player who... I don't know, anyway. I don't remember. But um, the primary weapon... I don't know, ammo for the primary weapon? I don't know what that is. It kind of looks like arrows, but who knows. You can see how low res this stuff is as well. Uh, armor and ring. So, what they've got is... We're going to try and kind of start off with here. We're not. We're going to leave the minimap for last because that actually isn't... That's going to be um, an actual rendering viewport as well. Uh, because we that's the way we're going to do it. Um, however, this stuff we need to, uh, design using our UI. So we've got the player's name. We don't even have a name for our player, so we should probably get on that. We've also got an icon based on which class the player is, and then a button over there, and then these three bars. So let's kind of try and do that. So today we're going to probably int integrate health as well as a player name. So we don't have any health either, so let's, let's kind of begin with that. Um, well actually we'll start with the player's name. So players should have a name, okay? Player extends mob. I don't think mobs in general should have names because, well, I don't know, maybe like enemies or significant non-player characters will, but mobs in general, no. So players should have names. How do we do that? Well, um, we'll start off with, um, where should I put this? These are our sprites, keyboard. Let's just do it up here. Private string name, okay? So when you create a player, we're just going to say you should give him a name. This is actually, since this does take a keyboard, this is implying that it's a um, a local player, not a not a multiplayer kind of player. So this is actually us, the person who's playing this on their computer locally. Um, and once we get to multiplayer, that'll be a whole different kind of ball game. But anyway, right now we'll stick to this. 
So this dot name, whoops, equals name. It's quite cold in here, and I can't like like I'm never good at typing when it's cold. Um, so we'll make a getter and setter. I've kind of done both apparently. We won't make a getter. We won't make a setter. Um, okay. So there we go. We've got the got the name. So I imagine this will error me somewhere. Oh, this isn't even the right one, is it? Let's do it for both constructors. I got no errors, so I knew that that wasn't right. All right. Now we should get an error. Here it is. Uh, and let's make sure we call the player Cherno. All right, cool. So what we want to do now is this UI panel is going to be largely controlled by the player class. Okay, because why you might ask because it or everything that UI panel displays is basically relevant to the player, right? It has nothing to do with something the player doesn't see or something the player doesn't know. If you take a look at the actual logical structure of our game, you would probably realize that, hey, everything that is in that UI panel, the player class should have access to. Because if the player class doesn't have access to something, it probably means that it shouldn't be displayed to the actual real physical world player or human that is playing the game, right? So a lot of game designers on programming and all these patterns and whatever are really, really, really logical, okay? So they should make sense. Um, that being said, uh, we've got this UI manager with a bunch of panels. So let's, let's make a bunch of UI stuff. So private UI label, and this might, this probably won't change, so I won't bother making it like this, but um, we'll see in a minute anyway. So UI panel. Oh, you guys are going to love what I'm about to do now. I'm going to just overhaul this whole thing. But um, <laughs> if, if we wanted to draw something like that, we could just go panel.add component. Let's see, name, set color. Oh, did I really close? That's a bit annoying. Let's try and find it. Um, here we go. So it's kind of grayish, and the background's dark gray. I'm matching this for the sake of matching it, by the way. If you guys want to change colors or whatever, you can do that. So we'll set the color of the player to be kind of a, a bright grayish color. So I might go like B, 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 B. Um, and uh, we want to drag this out probably quite low. We'll position it later. We can do that live. Um, and let's see the, the, pa the color of the panel though, um, which we can just say dot set color. It's a panel, isn't it? Okay. Panels are a bit different than components. Com panels probably should be components actually. So, what does the super constructor want? A position done. Okay. Um, I can say I've made it. I've made it a component pretty easily. Um, but the reason I did that was just so that we could set the color. Now, I bet panel probably has its. And by that, I mean so it's pretty dark. So let's set it to like. I don't know how dark it actually is, but maybe like four F ish. I don't know. Could have just set it to five zero, but anyway, that looks pretty good probably. Uh, and that returns a UI component, so well we can just cast it if we really wanted to, since we actually want this to explicitly be a UI panel. It doesn't need to be. It could be a UI component. I don't think we're doing anything panel related here. Um, I guess we're adding it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyway, um, oh, it actually will because add panel takes in a panel. Anyway, um. The other thing that it probably does have is color. Let's get rid of that. That's dangerous. Same with position. And we definitely don't want to have duplicates of that. Okay, cool. So if we run this now. Okay, so kind of darker. That actually matches it pretty well as far as that goes. Looks like the text is quite bold as well. So what we can do is dot set color dot set font. Um, oh, that's, whoops, that's not the right thing. Over here. Ugh, set font is bringing me down. It's totally there. Um, 
Yeah, the problem with this is that set color returns a UI component. So let's do this instead. Because I could fix this, by the way. Yeah, let's fix it. This is the worst fix ever. Just because it looks messy. So set font. Um, new font. Helvetica. We'll, we'll make it bold. So font of bold. I hope that's the right font. It is. Um, and the size, like, maybe like, yeah, I think 32 was a good size. Really, we just wanted to make it bold. So if we run this now, it's bold. Is it a bit too big? No, it's fine. Okay, and then let's kind of position this a bit. So if we go into UI label, I'm just going to add like 50 pixels. So I'm, it needs to be under the minimap, doesn't it? So probably around there is good, right? The minimap is going to be that big. We should make it a bit smaller as well. But yeah, so plus 100. That's what we want. So let's go back to player and add that name at 200. And yeah, let's make it about 24. All right, there we go. So that looks pretty good. That's our name. We should have our uh, class next to it as well. So let's kind of move it over a bit. A bit more. Probably not that much. Okay, looking pretty good. We'll have our class icon here. And then we'll have like the Nexus button or whatever to return. I don't know if we'll have that based on our game, but we might. Cool. There we go. Done. Um... If we really wanted, by the way, if you really, you can see that this one has like a bit of a shadow around it. It's it's really just got it like a black outline. What we really could do if we really wanted to was actually give it an outline. Um, and the quick and dirty way to do that is just to basically set the color uh, to black. And then just do, uh, we need to set the font to new font font dot get name font dot get style and font dot get size plus like two uh, I guess we'll do this actually since we've invested so much time into it that'll just draw it black um, and plus two was a mistake we'll make it plus one so it's a little bit bigger and then we just offset it a little bit so minus one, minus one, maybe. And might take a bit of skill to position this properly. But that actually seems to just be increasing it horizontally for some reason. That's quite weird. Um... Okay, let's do this instead. I'm actually quite surprised that it's not... It's barely affecting the vertical at all. This is more like a drop shadow, and it's a very bad one. Um, let's just set this to zero. Did that even do anything? Was it not? That's very weird. Plane. Yeah, that actually doesn't seem to be doing anything, weirdly enough. Let's, let's go to this. Why exactly is that doing nothing? What font is this? Helvetica, right? Yeah. Okay, this is interesting. That works. But plain and bold are apparently the same. That's a bit weird. Oh well. Okay, I didn't realize that this had no bold, but apparently it doesn't. Um, anyway, that yeah, that that just gets annoying. Okay, so 
you can add a bit of a shadow or a drop shadow by doing this. Yeah. Um, that just does, that just looks tragic. So we're going to get rid of that. Anyway, um, you guys get the idea. You probably should do it with a nicer font. Um, maybe a mono spaced font as well. Okay, cool. In fact, do you, well, maybe we should use a mono spaced font. Like, what's something that's Korean new isn't platform dependent? Gonzalez is, but that just looks like a typewriter. What about just Korea? Anyway, this game, I mean, this, <laughs> this, this part of the, of making the game is going to be all about just trial and error and just practicing, not practicing, but, oh, okay, that Vedana clearly supports bold. Um, that is bold. <laughs> Let's not set it to bold. Yeah, so, I don't know. You can play around with that. I actually quite like Vedana. Might stick with that. So there's our name. Um, I wonder if we made that bold. Whether or not it would look alright. Who knows. Let's set the font to new font. Font dot get name, font dot get. So if we set it to bold, oh, bold, bold just makes it scarily bold. Um, and then ugh. Anyway. Failing that, <laughs> what you could do is you could simply render it again at an offset of like that. What has that done? What? Where is, uh, is the font being set somewhere else? You could just do that and you can see that works pretty well if you really wanted a bit of a shadow. Okay, so uh, we'll, we might actually just keep it that way. So this is if you want a shadow. So what I might do is make a um, public boolean drop shadow and if drop shadow we do that done so um new feature so we can probably get rid of this horrificness now because i'm going to just say ui label name label equals that Um, name label dot set color. Oops. Name label dot set font. Name label dot drop shadow equals true. Name label. All right, there we go. So now at least we've got the drop shadow stuff for everything, and it will look pretty good. So if we scale it up or make it bold or whatever, so we could probably just make it bold like that. You can see that the shadow carries along pretty well. And if we make it much, much larger, <laughs> you can see that that shadow there actually adds quite a bit to it. It looks quite nice. You might, if, if you were doing it at 240, you probably want to do something like, I don't know, more offset. Um, to make it look a bit like this, but you can see it looks quite nice. Okay, in fact, I might want to do something like plus three, even though we're kind of at 24. Maybe not, maybe that'll be a bit too extreme, who knows? Yeah, that's a bit too extreme. So we'll make a public int, public tin, <laughs> public int drop shadow offset. Choose the default, and you can adjust it if you like. 
Alright, so there's the player name now being displayed in the UI panel. Looks pretty good. Um, so, uh, that's going to be it for this episode since this did take quite a while. Um, but next episode we're going to add the health bar and uh, it should be awesome. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to hit the like button and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Thank <music> you.